Okay, so we've been uh, talking about aging and different things to think about when aging. One last thing related to aging is back calculating. And this is basically taking an image of your spine or scale or otolith and uh, using the data from that image to find out how big a fish was uh, at each stage in its life. So each time it laid down an annulus, you can estimate how big that fish was. And this is a very nice feature that, that you can do with your aging structure. Um, there are many ways that you can use this. You can um, basically determine the size of a fish each time it laid down an annulus. So you can look at growth rates of that fish and growth rates at different points in its life. You can also look at historical growth rates for the population. And you can see sort of into the past, how are these fish growing? And maybe maybe there was a change in regulation. Maybe there was some sort of environmental or you know a really hot summer, cold summer, whatever. You wanted to see if that affected the growth of the fish. Um, note that back calculating is not something that you do every time you age fish. Um, but sometimes if you have a particular reason to want to know what the fish growth was like in the past or earlier in these fish's lives, you can do back calculating. Um, basically, all you need is to know the size of the fish when it was captured, and then you need to know the distance, the basically the size of the scale. And we're going to be talking in terms of scales, but as I said, you can do this with otoliths or spines. Um, so basically, you need the distance from the focus to the edge of the scale, the total length of the scale, and then you need the distance to each annulus. And so that's what this is showing here, that the distance from the focus to the edge of the scale is S sub C, that's the scale length. And then you measure the distance to each annulus. So S sub A1 is the length to annulus 1. This is the scale length to annulus 2, so on and so forth. Then it's just a simple direct proportion that the distance, the length from the focus to any annulus relative to the length of the scale is directly proportional to the length of the fish when they laid down that annulus to the length of the fish when you captured it. Okay, um, And usually you know three of these things. You should know three of these. Let me turn on my pen. You know the length to each annulus. You know the scale length. You know the length of the fish when you captured. What you're looking for is the length of the fish at each annulus. So you rearrange. Um, here's the definition for each of those. Then you rearrange and you see that the length of the fish at each annulus is simply take the, uh, the length to that annulus on the scale uh, divided by the length of the scale multiplied by the length of the fish when you captured. Straightforward. So um, here's an example with a, an H2 white crappie. Um, you see that the length of the fish when it was captured was 250 millimeters. The length of the scale is 100. Now this is unitless. If you, it's just 100 pixels or something if you measure it on the computer, or it could be in millimeters. It doesn't really matter. It's just a relative proportion. You see that the length to annulus 1 was 60. The length to annulus 2 was 80. You plug it in, so this fish was 150 millimeters at H1 and 200 millimeters at H2. Now, one problem with using this, if you're using scales, you need a correction factor. All right, um, You can do this with otoliths and spines, and for those, the previous equation works fine. But with scales, you need a correction factor, which is called the Fraser-Lee correction, and it's symbolized by a lowercase a. And here, basically, you have the same equation only you're going to take the length at capture minus this correction factor and then multiply it by the ratio of the scale lengths. Then you're going to add this correction factor in. So it's not like you're adding it and subtracting it and they can cancel out. You see it's being subtracted from the length at capture and then added back in later. Um, so what is A or where do I get it? Um, it's published. Carlanders put out several volumes that contain lots of fish data um, and the people have used these forever for summarizing or, or looking at data across regions and so f based upon those data people have calculated this value of A for different species and in general they're standardized 
so everybody uses the same value so my back calculations can be compared to your back calculations. Again, we don't use these for otoliths or spines. And this is how we get it. This is why we have to have that factor. If you look at the age of the fish um, on the x-axis, and here's the scale length on the y-axis, and as you would expect, as the fish gets older, their scales get longer. That's kind of the whole point of this, why this back calculating works. And if you fit a line to these points, which is what we do here, and here's the line, you see that this line does not go through the origin. And the y-intercept of that line is represented by this value a. And so what does this symbolize, or, or why, why does this happen? Essentially, when the fish is age zero, so when it's born, it already has some length to its scales. And so you need to account for that. Now, it's not really like that. that it really, basically, this is just a value that, that helps to make the calculations more accurate. But you can think of it like the fish scales already had some length when the fish was born. It doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that you have to use this value if you're doing back calculating on scales. So, same fish as before, but now we're going to use the A value for white crappie, which is 35. You see then we're going to add this 35 in after we subtract it from the L sub C, and we get different values. We see that the, the fish was a little bit shorter at the early ages, and that's why you need to use it, so it gives you more accurate data. You see it was 150 and 200 with the direct proportion method. Actually, it was a little bit longer. Um, the, the fish was actually longer at age one and longer at age two than when we use the direct proportion method. Now, one thing that you need to be aware of when you're do, working with back calculations is something called the Lee phenomenon. I'm not sure if it's the same Lee that did the Fraser Lee correction, doesn't matter. But this is something to w watch out for when you do back calculations. Um, let's say that you have a number of fish and you back calculate the length at age for all these fish. Many times you'll recognize that as you summarize the data that the size at early ages for the older fish is less than the size at early ages for the younger fish. Now what, that, that sounds confusing. Imagine that you've got uh, a sample, and in that sample there's a 10-year-old fish and a 5-year-old fish. And you back calculate length at age for each of those fish. And so you know how big each fish was at age 1. And what you'll find out is that more often than not, that 10-year-old fish was smaller at age 1 than the 5-year-old fish. And that 10-year-old fish was smaller at age 2 than that 5-year-old fish. That's the Lee phenomenon. It happens consistently, but it shouldn't. You would expect that all the fish would be about the same size at age one and about the same size at age two, but in reality, they often aren't. And it's pretty easy to understand why. You've got fast-growing and slow-growing fish in any population. The fast-growing fish are going to be bigger at age one, and they're going to be bigger at age two than their uh, cohorts, the others in their cohort, right? That makes sense. But if they're growing faster, that means that they're recruiting to the fishery sooner. And also, you'll find with, with a lot of living organisms, especially fish, that if you grow faster, you tend to die younger. Um, that, that the fish that, that you know, live fast die young. And it has something to do with their metabolism. And so, um, the only fish that make it to an old age are those that are slow growers. And so it's no surprise that they were smaller at age one and smaller at age two because they've been growing slower for their whole life. And that's the leaf phenomenon. Now you don't always find this, but you often do, and so it's something to watch out for. Uh, here's some summary data from handout 14. There's more information on there, but this is some data that shows the Lee phenomenon. This is a sample that was taken in 1999. Um, so you see that, that we had uh, 20 H1 fish, 18 H2 fish, 11 H3, 6 H4, and 2 H5. So we've got some old fish and we've got some young fish. And if we look at these old fish, when they were captured 
They are average 355 millimeters. They're older. They should be bigger. As you go back and you see how big they were at each age, let's go all the way back to age one. At age one, those fish were on average 150 millimeters. Okay? But if you look at the age one fish uh, that are actually age one, so, so again, this was taken in 1999, so these fish were age five. I just back calculated to how big they were at age one. These fish, the 1998 year class, these fish are age one when I captured them. And you see their average size is 175 millimeters. So they're quite a bit bigger at age one on average than these fish. Well, that's because there's still a lot of fast growers. I've got 20 of these fish. A lot of those fish are fast growers. So yeah, the average length at age one is much higher. But those fast growers are going to die sooner. They're only going to make it to age two, maybe age three. The only fish that make it all the way up to age five are the slow growers. And so when you go back and see how big they were at each age, yeah, they're always a little bit smaller. And that's because they were smaller. They're growing slower. And that's the Lee phenomenon. And it's you know, not always clean. It's not always in effect. But this is something to watch out for. Okay, um, and then the last thing to talk about as far as um, back calculating is how do we do this? How do we get these measurements? Um, clearly, the easiest way is to take a picture from the microscope and then just do measurements on the computer. The software that we use is called ImageJ. It's freeware, and it does exactly that, and it's a piece of cake. Uh, old school is to take that camera, project it on the wall, and then measure with a ruler, or maybe use a microfiche machine and read them and measure them with a ruler. That works, but there's no reason to do that anymore. You can just take a picture and measure it on the computer. Um, so that's back calculating. That's a skill that you might want to use sometime in the future, and that's all I have, so thanks a lot.